This is the part where they go to the couch. They'll leave the desk and go sit down. This is the part where they go to the couch. Let's watch them sit down. Hey, Chris. Hey, Will. Long time no see. Yeah, welcome to the couch. Yeah, this was a fun little jog over here. Yeah. Got my steps in for the day. It's literally... Watch out, fitness. I am you. It's literally the most I've moved in weeks. Yeah, I feel that. <laughs> it's, it, it's brutal. Um, so welcome to the part of the show where we go to the couch. Um, this part of the show is normally going to be reserved for our interviews with people, our chance to hear stories from around our church, around our youth ministry, um, and just your personal stories. Um, our personal stories about kind of what's going on, maybe what has been, the, what have been the big events that have shaped your life, um, some of those things. And, and this week, we really wanted to just start by um, just talking a little bit about just everything that's going on. And I mean, I don't know, Chris, if you want to weigh in on that, but just obviously right now we're, you know, we're in a, a time where everybody's confused. I mean, um, literally from world leaders to us who know nothing, um, there's just a level of confusion and uncertainty and we're trying to figure out how to navigate that. Yeah, this is one of those things that's kind of like a generational moment. Like you'll look back on this and it'll be kind of what defines that era. And especially for you being so young, it's going to stick with you the entire rest of your life. And is going to be one of those things that really identifies you because it's, I mean, it's going to be the next 70 something years you're going to be remembering this, if not longer when we all have space brains in like the next 50 years in the future or whatever that is. Uh, but yeah, it's just, it's one of those times that things are confusing. Uh, we don't really know what's going on. We don't really know how we're supposed to be interpreting things. We don't really know kind of like what is life because things are normal, but they're also not because you're at home and your Wi-Fi works, but also you're not really supposed to leave the house to buy more Cheetos yeah. or anything like that. I think, I mean, as I look back, it, I think every generation has something that kind of defines their generation, right? Like you'll, you'll hear your grandparents, or your parents say like, Hey, when I was growing up and then they'll fill in the blank with stories that it may be at like some points in your life. If you're totally honest, you're like, this is a really boring story. Yeah. Um, you, and you just immediately just kind of blank out on it, which yeah. don't do that. Don't do that. Actually, Learn listen. from us. Don't do that. Um, because honestly, like I wish I'd have listened to a lot of those stories because I remember growing up, you know, for my grandparents, it was like, Hey, we remember coming through world war II. Right, like that was their generational moment. It was like, man, we remember that. It was huge. It was a big thing. Um, do you feel like you had a generational moment? Yeah, it's uh, it's interesting to reflect back on my life, just because I'm I'm 28, by the way. So I'm I'm just young, and getting spry. getting. Oh, my knee is starting to make a clicking noise, so that's how I know I'm like on the way out of being young. <laughs> but that's fine. I just have ibuprofen before I dance at weddings, and everything's okay. And then I have like a Gatorade in the shower afterwards to recover. But I'm still like young enough to be able to dance well, um, as well as I can. But for me and for my generation, we've had a few things that kind of stick out. I think the first kind of tragedy, just big moment of my life kind of like this was, for me when I was eight, it was three days after my eighth birthday was the Columbine school shooting. And I remember just the news all about that and that was also one of the first high profile things where it was really in the news and they were trying to figure this out so it was being run so much. So that's something I remember even as an eight-year-old, my world was very isolated and insulated, so it didn't really affect me. Because where did you go to school, Chris? I went to school in the basement because I was homeschooled, and sometimes upstairs at the kitchen. But I was homeschooled, so I didn't really have a lot of the feelings some other people yeah. did being in public school and all that. So that was something I remember, but maybe doesn't shape me as much. I do remember 9-11 happening. Well, hold on. Before we get to 9-11, I think if I, if I could just weigh in a little bit on yeah. Columbine, because... I mean, all of you, if you're watching and you're in our target demographic, so if mom and dad are watching, like, awesome, we're glad you're on. Um, but, like, if you're in the middle school, high school, you've grown up in a world where, honestly, like, as it's, it's terrible, and I, I hate that this is the norm and the reality, but school shootings have kind of become to the point where it used to shut the nation down. Like, everybody mm -hmm. would, everything was about it. And, and now, like, you hear about it, it's a blip on the radar. Yeah. And... Um, but this was, it wasn't like that when Columbine happened and it was, um, I was a sophomore in high school, so I was, I'm a little older than you. Um, we won't say how much. Yeah. Not as old as my baldness would try to make me look. 
but um, but I am a little older. So I was a, I was a sophomore in high school, and I remember when that happened. Up to that point, we'd never had that question like, would we be safe at school? Like it was just it was taken for granted. Um, you knew you were going to be safe at school. We also um, Columbine was a very very much um, this, the way the story unfolded and was told to us. I mean, it was very much that hey, um, this shooter was actively targeting Christians, and so it was it was the first time I remember people actually thinking like, hey, it could actually cost me something to say that I'm a believer in Jesus Christ. Um, that was a, that it was a foreign idea to me um, up till that that moment. And that was, that was, I think, the biggest shaping piece of that from Columbine was like, oh my goodness, like somebody would actually want to kill somebody because they follow Jesus. And historically, yeah, that's actually been his, the history of Christianity, um, but it wasn't my 16-year-old experience. Yeah, so that's, that's one of those things that starts to really redefine yeah. your reality for you because life went on, you went back to school, it was probably fine for like 99% of the time, but every so often did you ever get that feeling like, what if this were to happen again? And, yeah. and to you in that moment. Yeah, and I don't think personally I did, but I know a lot of people who did, and it was just a, it was a weird thing, and um, yeah, nobody quite knew how to, how to process it, but. Yeah. Yeah, so, so sorry, that was my interjection on Columbine, but. Yeah, so then the next thing um, for us uh, would have been 9-11, and I was in I, fifth grade, I wanna say it was fifth grade, um, obviously September 11th, 2001. And I remember coming back from the band class that I took at the elementary school that was close by. I only went for band. I was that kid when I was homeschooled where people are like, hey, I recognize you, but not for anything like that you really should. You just play an instrument. What do you play? I played the bass clarinet, which was the manliest of clarinets, which is not a high compliment. <laughs> so I was coming back and uh, I was getting ready to start you know, my school day and all that. And the TV's on and my dad hadn't left for work yet, I don't think. And I was really confused because you just see all this smoke and all this, you know, you're, you're seeing the image um, from the towers because they'd both been hit at that point, I believe. And um, that was something that, again, I didn't quite fully process. I remember my sister, who was a couple years older than me, was very distraught about it. I remember just kind of talk and it was like, well, what's this going to do to gas prices and stuff like that? Back when it was like still under a dollar, um, I'm pretty sure at that point it was still like 98 cents and you're like, this is outrageous. And then it's, you know, obviously we have what we have now, but that was one of those things that again, I was still kind of insulated from the situation, but it changed my reality again. Cause I learned what this horrible thing was, what this act of terror was, what this act of violence was. So it, it really crashed into my world and it, it, it shifted stuff around and Again, it's one of those things that I have to think about, you know, anytime I'm at an airport, it's not a huge fear or something, but it's changed our nation, it's changed the entire world. Yeah, and that's, and I think that's a big piece of it, right, is it's not even all that it's, it's not even all fear and doom and gloom. Some of it's just weird realities, right, mm -hmm. that, um, man, if, if you've never flown through an airport back in the day when the people who came to pick you up could literally meet you when you got off the plane and your people, your people would just meet you, like, right there at the plane, like, Post yeah. 9-11, that doesn't happen anymore. Yeah, like old movies seem like they're liars because you're yeah. like, you can't do that. You yeah. can't meet me at this terminal. It's like, well, you if you flew arrested. Delta, for sure not. But right, you get arrested. Yeah, um, super duper. So yeah. for you... For me, I was, just, I was a freshman in college when that happened. And so I remember I was at the school and we were in like a large gathering. They just started, so they told us what happened. They sent us all back. And I just remember like we sat in classes just watching, um, watching coverage. And, and it wasn't even like fear. It was just like, I actually don't know what to do with this. Like my brain didn't have like a place to put it. Yeah. Um, if that makes sense. It's like you're holding a bunch of things and someone is like, here, here's this other thing. Yeah. And you're like, I, I have two hands. I can't hold all these lemons. And yeah, they're like, like, here's a larger lemon. And so it's what worse. do I do with that? And, and so then it was, you know, that was in college, right? And then moving out of college, I mean, we saw the world change drastically those next couple of years. So I would say 9-11 really defined my college experience um, in terms of like from a geopolitical that's a really big word. Like this is a youth podcast. Like mm -hmm. why did I use that? It's not even a podcast. It's a you, whatever this is. Right. It's that's for, a big Scrabble earner yeah, right anyway. there. Geopolitical. So geopolitical. I know you haven't been in school for three days. So like there's your word for the day. If you can learn to spell it, um, your parents will help you pass whatever grade you're in and you'll be good. So, um, but that it yeah. really changed everything. And, but here's the thing too. I, 
I, looking back on both of those events, I feel like there's always been things that come out of them that you don't expect. Um, especially coming out of 9-11, like in a positive way, mm -hmm. right? Like coming out of 9-11, like there was a couple things that I remember really, really clearly. One of them was that all of a sudden the, our nation was um, unified in a way that I don't think I remember it ever being. I mean, mm -hmm. I grew up in the area of the 90s and like there was tons of, tons of political discord just like there is today. And like all of a sudden things were like, the, the, our nation came together in one place. Um, yeah. Also, there was this weird, like, like, hey, we don't know what to expect. We don't know what to do. We're panicking. Um, and then all of a sudden, there's, like, this renewed interest in God. Because mm -hmm. people are saying, hey, I actually don't know what to do with my life. Um, should I, like... Who has the answers? Where are the answers? And so, actually, in the days and months that followed, like we saw church attendance rise and all of that. And and the reason we bring all this stuff up, if you're like, why are you giving me a history lesson? Um, number one, it counts towards school. Yeah, um, this is for you. Yeah, this is for you. It's a public service. Um, number two, though, um, here here's what here's what I'm thinking with about about with this, and, and I think you can weigh in on this too, if you. But as I look at these major events that happen and the way they shaped our thinking and the way they shaped like the world that we live in, it always seems like on the other end of these things, um, there's a ton of confusion in the moment. Mm -hmm. and on the other end of these things, we start to see not the whole picture yet, right? We haven't seen the whole picture of like what God's doing. Yeah. Um, but we definitely start to see that like, okay, like there's some things that are changing and some things that are happening in these like terrible things that actually God uses for good. Um, and the renewed interest, especially in the faith and just people seeking answers um, was definitely one of those coming out of 9-11. And I don't know, that was, that was one of the encouraging mm -hmm. things to look at. And I mean, that's really what we're looking at in this thing now with, with the coronavirus, with COVID-19 is we have, um, whether it's the actual virus itself and people are like, you're scared of that. Mm -hmm. Um, you're scared because you're worried that you might get it or that there's somebody that you love that's in a high risk area. Right. Um, they're, they're like, man, like I know somebody like my dad is one of those people who's, who's high risk and, um, and man, that can be scary, but maybe it's not even that. Maybe you're like, I'm not worried about getting it. I'm young, I'm healthy and I'm impenetrable. Yeah. I'll just buck it off. It's fine. Because, it's nothing. Yeah. Because I got this. Yeah. You, you got it. But at the same time, then there's like, maybe it's not the virus itself, not the medical stuff, but man, like this whole like social distancing thing, this missing out on the people you know at school, um, man, if you're a senior and you're watching right now, like I feel for you, you are missing out on like the, the, the last part of your senior year, your last time doing spring sports. A lot of the big romanticized moments, like that last dance, the la just the last everything yeah. that you already had had planned all these mile markers that were there in front of you and you're like all right when I hit this I know I've done x and I when we hit this I've done y and all this and all these things that you thought you kind of had a grasp on and you, that you were not in a bad way building your reality around but just ways to measure kind of your progress even as you're going into adulthood now those are all just kind of taken away from you yeah. Yeah. And that's, and, and as you're trying to process that, we want to, we want to help you with that. We want to help you try to, to think through it. I mean, another piece of that too is um, just the financial impact of this. I know some of you, your families are probably have lost work. You're, you've got parents who are either unemployed or they're just not getting hours. Um, maybe your parents are working from home and you guys are like, like this is causing some, like, man, it's hard. Like mm -hmm. having everybody stuck in one house under one roof, like all the time, 24 hours a day. Um, it, it, exposes some tension and it exposes some fear and some frustrations and and we want to help you navigate through that so over the next couple of weeks um, what we want to do is we want to talk to you um, we're going to call a series we're going to call it into the unknown and I'm, in just a minute we're going to transition into that and yes I know it's a frozen song which um, I didn't realize that until like after we came up with the title it was your idea you because I that? haven't seen frozen 2 because um, I am an so, adult and I don't, don't have time for movies yeah that's not true no that's super <laughs> it's not true. such a lie that's, um, that's a it's lie it's quarantine time like yeah. you've got all the time in the world but uh we aren't contrary to popular belief we're not going to sing it um but I, I do think even even though you haven't seen it yet I think the title was um super helpful and just um 
just going, hey, like we actually are moving into a season. We don't know how long this is going to last. We don't know how, how bad it's going to get. Um, but one thing we do know and one thing that we're going to explore is the stories of faith, of how God over and over again, when, when his people move into the unknown, he always meets them there. And he's never shocked. He's never mm -hmm. overwhelmed. And he's never surprised no matter how much we are.